Welcome back. So while I was waiting for the winds to improve for another ground effect test, I've been busy uh, getting my flight instructor refresher course uh, online, getting that all done. So that's all sorted out now. And uh, this is yesterday now. I was actually able to get the aircraft out again. The winds weren't exactly, you know, completely favorable. There was a little bit of a left crosswind there on runway 35, but I was sort of comfortable enough to actually give it a try. I actually gave it a run um, earlier in the morning and, and it was too much and a bit gusty and then so I waited until after lunch and then uh, gave it this try again. So uh, let's see uh, how this works out. All right, so the goal here was to uh, see if my adjustments to balancing the aircraft left and right was going to make a difference on the roll to see if there was any just induced roll from coming from the airframe itself. Um, unfortunately, not super ideal conditions. I would have liked to have have had uh, just completely calm conditions, but as I said, you know, you, I've been waiting almost 10 days for a try at this. Uh, so the wind was coming. Um, a little bit from a left crosswind and a little bit gusty but it was only about five or six knots at most um, so uh, yeah let's just see how this plays out Okay, so before I analyze this, I just wanted to show you I did have a bit of an imbalance on the fuel, six on one and nine on the other, so um, plus three on the right-hand side. All right, so the first thing I did right was I got the aircraft to about 90 knots, and then I pulled the power back uh, enough to maintain 90 knots, and then I actually rotated uh, the nose and just pulled up a little bit on the nose just to get it to come off right here. And it comes off cleanly, and you see there I get about five degrees nose-up attitude. So quite happy with that, although you can already see there's a bit of bank to the right going on and the uh, aileron is fairly neutral there. So um, here the aircraft starts to bank back to the left and it's you know maintaining sort of about three degrees nose up. And as you can see now it's starting to bank to the right and I'm putting in some aileron to try and compensate for that. And the nose comes up to about 7 degrees, but I made the mistake of putting too much elevator nose down. So now I start to come level and of course start to descend. And there I'm just about to touch again on the mains. And that happens pretty much wings level. 
but as you can see, I'm already off center line because I was off center line once I first got airborne. And I think that's mainly from the uh, left crosswind. I hadn't compensated for that. So now I'm trying to bring it back again uh, by banking uh, to the left. And, you know, maybe I over, um, over controlled it a little bit, but I don't have a lot of aileron in there. As you see, it's pretty neutral right now. And as you'll see here in a second there, it wants to basically level out and come back to the right again all on its own. So I think maybe the combination of the um, extra fuel in the right tank and all the, the left crosswind is helping the aircraft bank. And if it's not that, there's something inherent in the aircraft that's still wanting to make it bank a little bit to the right at least. That's, you know, my take. Now I'm not having to put very much aileron in at all in, in order to compensate for this. So it's something I could potentially trim out in flight. So I'm not too concerned about it, but it's definitely something I still need to understand better. And as you see here, you know, just kind of compensating for it each time and, and ultimately here, put both wheels down and then roll out. So the good news is this time I didn't get the aircraft any higher than about seven, uh, seven and a half degrees nose up attitude and I maintained the, the airspeed a little bit higher than before because I had the trim set, um, not quite so much nose up trim. So overall I don't really have any solid conclusions on uh, what's going on with the roll and just going to have to uh, work through it some more to see what's going on. And here's a view of that camera on the right gear leg to see how that handles um, the touchdowns. So that's the three different touchdowns there, and now the just the first one in slow motion. And I think that flexing is pretty much what's been designed into it by Mark. And lastly, I now have a helmet that was loaned to me uh, by a local guy over here near Savannah. And so I've done some modifications to it to make it work for me. I've actually got my Bose boom mic on there, um, mounted on the side of the helmet. And I'll tell you why in a second. So I'm basically running that as the mic. So that'll be one cord. And then the actual headset itself and built into the helmet, I'm running that. And I had to get um, a military to, you know, GA adapter for that. So I'll be plugging my mic um, plug in there for the bows into the aircraft. And then the headset one from this adapter um, into the headset plug in the, in the ship. And unfortunately this adapter that I bought, the PA88, uh, didn't actually work for me right out of the box. Um, so I had to put this uh, 47 microfarad capacitor in line there on the green wire. And what was happening was the GMA35 audio panel that I have, the Garmin one, was detecting this, um, I guess, in incorrect impedance. And so it was basically just cutting out after a couple of seconds. But as you can see, uh, now it's working and I'm getting the audio coming through nicely on both. Uh, earphones there. So that's sorted out. And the reason why I'm using the Bose mic off of my headset is because uh, the mask or the helmet came with this mask, oxygen mask, but I don't really want to use that. Just, you know, uncomfortable to wear and there's no reason to use it other than just breathing through it. And so the microphone is embedded in there and I didn't really want to try and pull that out of there. So, you know, just switching to my Bose mic is a much better solution and then I don't have to have this mask on my face which is you know has no benefit so on the Bose headset there you just undo a couple of screws there and the whole um, boom mic comes off with the main cord and it doesn't actually affect uh, how the whole headset works so I just used some cable ties there and mounted it to one of those mounts for the oxygen mask and it's nice and stable in there and so thanks uh, Derek very much for lending me your helmet I'll look after it and I'll get it back to you when I'm all done with it so this is what it's going to look like from now on when I'll be using the helmet so that's my update. Um, thanks again for watching and we'll see when get some good windy, uh, low wind conditions again. I'll get the thing in ground effect one more time. So thanks again for watching.